Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. On a two-day visit to India, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrives to a grand welcome in Ahmedabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi accompanies him on a cultural roadshow from the airport to Gandhi Ashram. Center to grant citizenship to one lakh Chakma and Hajong refugees, but citizenship may not entitle them to rights enjoyed by scheduled tribes in Arunachal Pradesh. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley says 30 crore families have got bank accounts since the launch of India's Jandhan Yojana. He informs that 99.99% households have at least one bank account now. And British government seizes several properties belonging to India's most wanted gangster Dawood Ibrahim. The mastermind of the 1993 Mumbai serial blast case also included in UK's latest list of financial sanctions targets. Our top story, Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrived in Gujarat on Wednesday for a two-day visit to attend the annual summit between the two countries. Abe, who is accompanied by his wife Aki Abe, was accorded a warm welcome by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Ahmedabad. Abe was presented a guard of honor at the airport, after which artists performed the traditional Gujarati dance. A group of Buddhist monks were also present at the airport. The two leaders then proceeded on a first-of-its-kind roadshow of two heads of states together from the airport to the Sabarmati Ashram. The eight-kilometer route was decked up with more than 25 stages where artists from different states had performed. Both the leaders paid tributes to Mahatma Gandhi at Sabarmati Ashram. The Prime Ministers also visited the historic Siddhi Syed Mosque, which was built in 1573. On Thursday, both Modi and Abe will lay the foundation stone of India's first bullet train to be run between Mumbai and Ahmedabad. The bullet train is built with financial assistance from Japan. Both the leaders will then have the 12th Indo-Japan Summit level meeting and they will also participate in a business meet. We'll keep you uh, updated on all developments on that front. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that zero balance accounts under the PM's Jandhan Yojana have come down to 20% from 77% in three years. Speaking at a conclave on financial inclusion, Jaitley stressed that even the remaining accounts will become operational with the expansion of the direct benefit transfer. Addressing the conclave on financial inclusion organized by the United Nations in the national capital on Wednesday, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that 30 crore families have got bank accounts since the launch of India's Jan Dhan Yojana. Jaitley asserted that about 42% of households were unbanked before the scheme and now 99.99% households have at least one bank account. Number of amount accounts open which were available to women, to scheduled castes, to OBCs, to minorities, which was a much larger percentage outside the financial inclusion, the number of accounts of these segments which were opened also have become much larger in terms of percentage itself. Jaitley emphasized that the biometric identification number Aadhaar was an evolving idea under the previous UPA regime and it did not have any legislative banking. However, the Aadhaar legislation passed by the BJP rule will stand the test of constitutionality. Jaitley's statement on Aadhaar assumes significance as a five-judge bench of the Supreme Court is hearing a petition challenging the centre's move to make Aadhaar mandatory to avail benefits of social welfare schemes. The case hearing will resume in the first week of November. Even while upholding, and rightly so, the idea of privacy as, as an important constitutional guarantee, the restraints under Article 21, which the Supreme Court said, and that's the question which you had raised just now, which could be imposed, they have to be by law, they have to be obviously reasonable, 
Jaitley also defended the government's decision to scrap high-value currency notes and underscored that demonetization has led to reduction in quantum of cash in the economy, expanded the tax base and propelled digitization. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. The Home Ministry has cleared the citizenship for over one lakh Chakma, Hajong, Buddhists and Hindus who fled to India in the 1960s. The Supreme Court had directed the government to do so in 2015 as the refugees have been settled in India for more than five decades. The move comes amid the ongoing Rohingya Muslims exodus from Myanmar, whom India has decided to deport. The government has decided to grant citizenship to nearly one lakh Chakma and Hajong refugees. They had come to India from the erstwhile East Pakistan five decades ago and are living in Arunachal Pradesh since then. The decision was taken at a high-level meeting convened by Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh and attended by Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Khandu, Union Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. However, citizenship will not entitle the refugees to the rights enjoyed by scheduled tribes in Arunachal Pradesh. They may be issued in a line permit to travel and work, but no land rights. Unka जो मानव अधिकार है उसको ध्यान में रखते हुए सुप्रीम कोर्ट का ऑर्डर भी है सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा है कि चकमा हाजोंग को सिटीजनशिप देने का निर्देश जारी किया है फिर भी भारत सरकार अरुणाचल प्रदेश का जो इंडिजिनस पॉपुलेशन है वहां के स्थानीय लोगों का जो संवैधानिक हक है उसको किसी भी तरह से हनन नहीं होने देंगे वी विल प्रोटेक्ट द राइट्स ऑफ द इंडिजिनस पीपल ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश the Chakmas and Hajongs were originally residents of Chittagong Hill Tracts in erstwhile East Pakistan. They left their homeland when it was submerged by the Kaptai Dam project in the 1960s. The Chakmas, who are Buddhists, and the Hajongs, who are Hindus, also allegedly faced religious persecution. The Centers initiative is also in line with the Supreme Court Directive of 2015. It comes at a time when the government has been criticized for its plans to deport Rohingya Muslims who crossed over to India due to alleged persecution in Myanmar. On Wednesday, human rights groups and activists held protests outside the Myanmar embassy in New Delhi. Sharnarthiyo ke samasya ek humanitarian crisis hai. Is par is mulk mein ek rawayat rahi hai. Gandhi Nehru se leke aaz tak. Hum un rawayaton ko kyun khatm kar rahe hain? National safety security ke naam pe legality aap lagaiye. लेकिन ह्यूमैनिटेरियन क्राइसिस पे जो हमारा पक्ष रहा है सन 50 से लेके अब तक उसके साथ छेड़छाड़ हो रही है वो हमें हिंदुस्तानी होने के कारण कचोट रहा है इंडिया शुड हैव कॉम्प्रेंसिव पॉलिसी ऑन रेफ्यूजीज और इश्यूज मस्ट बी एड्रेस्ड ऑन ह्यूमैनिटेरियन ग्राउंड एस अ मैच्योर्ड सिविलाइज्ड नेशन the center maintains the influx of Rohingya migrants undermines the country's security. Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju also slammed attempts to brand India as a villain on the issue, saying it was a calibrated design to tarnish the country's image. The Home Ministry has also warned state governments that Rohingyas could be vulnerable to recruitment by terror groups. At present, the Rohingya refugees are concentrated in Jammu, Hyderabad, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi NCR and Rajasthan. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, as criticism of a handling of the Rohingya crisis grows, Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi has decided to skip the United Nations General Assembly next week. Around 370,000 Rohingya Muslims have fled Rakhine State since the outbreak of violence last month. The violence has triggered a humanitarian crisis in the region as the Rohingyas are fleeing to neighboring Bangladesh and India. The crisis has piled intense global pressure on the Nobel laureate, with the UN describing it as ethnic cleansing. As the exodus of Rohingyas to Bangladesh continues, the United Nations has asked aid agencies to step up help operations. Have an emergency within an emergency. Right. In one word, we all have to ramp up our response massively, massively, from food to shelter to the thousands of children that you see here, to the mothers, to uh, getting people onto a path where they then start to reclaim the essentials of life. That, in a word, ramping up our response is why we have come here with my colleague from IOM. Hmm.
Back to national news, and the father of the murdered Class 2 student Pradumna Thakur moved the Bombay High Court against the pre-arrest bail pleas of the trustees of Ryan International School. The group's CEO, Ryan Pinto, and other trustees had approached the High Court seeking transit and dissipatory bail, apprehending arrest till they approached the concerned court in Haryana. Seven-year-old Pradumna Thakur, who studied at the Ryan School in Gurugram, was found with his throat slit last Friday in a school's toilet allegedly by a school bus conductor. Many union ministers called on Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu in New Delhi today. Prominent among them was Union Defence Minister uh, Nirmala Sitharaman. Others who met the Vice President included Minister of State for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Anand Kumar Hegre, Minister of State for Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Gajendra Singh Shekhawat and Minister of State for Women and Child Development Dr. Virendra Kumar. And the Vice President today sought a professional and expenditure audit of Rajya Sabha TV. PTI quoted sources as saying that he pitched for framing an action plan to expand the channel's reach. During a one and a half hour long review of the Rajya Sabha TV, Vice President Naidu, who is the chairman of Rajya Sabha, made queries regarding the reach of the channel, manpower utilization, expenditure under various heads, mandate of the channel and its content. He also directed a comprehensive professional and expenditure audit. The Vice President also suggested that Raj Sabha TV should be able to quantify the reach of the channel besides having systems for feedback on the evaluation of the content. He also asked for efforts to expand Raj Sabha TV's reach with a clear plan of action. Needless to say, we'll keep you updated on developments there. And here's a look at the other national news stories. Congress-backed NSUI made a comeback in the Delhi University Students' Union elections, bagging two of the four crucial posts, including that of the President. The BJP-affiliated ABVP backed two seats of the Joint Secretary and General Secretary. NSUI's Rocky Tushid won the President's post by 1,590 votes, while Kunal Therawat defeated his ABVP rival by 175 votes. Fifty thousand Shiksha Mitras from UP are protesting at Delhi's Jantar Mantar for the last two days. A delegation is expected to meet HRD Minister Prakash Javrikar with demands for equal work and equal pay. The Election Commission announced the bipole to the Gurdaspur Lok Sabha seat in Punjab that fell vacant after the demise of actor turned politician Vinod Khanna in April. Bipoles to the Gurdaspur seat and Kerala's Vingara Assembly seat will be held on the 11th of October, for which separate notifications will be issued on the 15th of September. With a quick break here, up next, international news. So with the recent cabinet reshuffle, JDU actually did not get anything. JDU did not ask for anything. JDU did not expect anything. RJD somewhere down the line, they were the bada bhai in politics and uh, JDU somewhere was playing the second fiddle. There is no bada bhai, chota bhai in politics. Kya uh, Nitish Kumar wo sapna chhod chuke hain ki wo Pradhan Mantri ke pad ke liye ladenge 2019 mein? Nitish Kumar ji ne ek baar bhi nahi kiya ki bhi mein Pradhan Mantri banna chahta. उन्होंने बहुत मिलनता से कहा मेरी छोटी पार्टी दो एमपी है। Watch to the point with senior JDU leader K C Tiagi only on Rajya Sabha Television. Kaziranga National Park, a World Heritage Site. 430 square kilometer area sprinkled with elephant grass meadows, swampy lagoons and dense forests is home to more than 2,200 Indian one-horned rhinoceros, approximately two-thirds of their total world population. The park is also the breeding ground of elephants, wild water buffaloes and swamp deer. Over the time, the tiger population has also increased in Kaziranga.
clock ticked through the night. So much happened as you slept. So much you missed. Wake up to a complete roundup of news from India and abroad. Politics, strategy, business, sports. Keen analysis to kickstart your day. Watch Breakfast News weekdays at 8 a.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. International news and the British government sees several properties belonging to India's most wanted gangster, Dawood Ibrahim. Reports say that the properties are worth nearly $7 billion. Dawood owns a hotel in Warwickshire and other residential properties across the Midlands in the UK. The mastermind of the 1993 Mumbai serial blast case also appears on the UK's latest list of the financial sanctions targets. Dawood has been based in Pakistan's Karachi for years. He's also listed as a global terrorist by the UN Security Council's ISIS and Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee. भारत सरकार की पहले से कोशिश रही है कि दाऊद इब्राहिम को दबोचा जाए जहां भी कोशिश हुई है सरकार की तरफ से उस पर सख्ती से अमल हुआ है दबाव दुबई में भी बनाया है और यूके में भी दाऊद इब्राहिम की प्रॉपर्टी जब्त हुई है एक बड़ी खबर है कि जो देश के खिलाफ होगा जो देश के खिलाफ द्रोह करेगा वो दुनिया में कहीं भी छुपा हो भारत सरकार उसको छोड़ने वाली नहीं है now, even as European countries boost relief efforts in their Caribbean territories devastated by Hurricane Irma, aid rushed into hurricane-scarred Florida as well in the U.S. as residents began to move back to their homes and took stock of the devastation. The hurricane, which has now petered down, has left behind a trail of death and destruction. Category 5 storm Irma has left a massive trail of death and destruction in its aftermath. Most parts of Florida, the Caribbean and Cuba are still flooded with no power supply, even as some of the residents began returning to their homes damaged by the powerful storm. The roof is off and that seems to be the breaking point. If you have a roof over your head, you're in great shape. If not, the walls get damaged, the floor gets damaged. I'm here for six months, so all my stuff is new. And so you kiss that goodbye. The most terrifying storm I've ever been through, my hotel room was a foot deep in water. Other hotel rooms in the same building were totally destroyed. There was one person killed. And, and, and then I went to a friend's house and stayed there, and, and she has a small, well-protected place that was, that was uh, uh, you know, not damaged much. But the fact is that that's the end of St. Martin's. Amid the relief and rescue operations, U.S. Marines and sailors delivered aid to hard-hit St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands by sea. St. Thomas was among the many Caribbean islands ravaged by Hurricane Irma over the last week. Many of the victims had been complaining about the lackadaisical response by the U.S. Department of State over Hurricane Irma, but the administration has refuted the charges and blamed media for false reportage. No attention by the government. I got to talk to something about the people of Puerto Rico, what big hearts you guys got, because our government did nothing, nothing. People come out with some machetes, offering bullets and saying there's more for you, breaking into houses, hurting people. One news outlet with uh, unnamed former administration officials wrote a story claiming that the State Department wasn't doing enough and the State Department was too slow to act. What I can tell you is about 2,000 people have been evacuated from uh, St. Martin. And we did that in a quick period of time as a storm was bearing down on us and another storm was immediately running behind. An already struggling Cuba has been pushed further back economically by Hurricane Irma. Irma was the strongest storm to strike the country in more than 80 years, ravaging infrastructure throughout the country, collapsing the power grid and damaging crops. 
es un polo importante porque es el principal destino de Sor y Playa y haber garantizado Varadero va a garantizar la continuidad de nuestro desarrollo económico. Con la callería la naturaleza pudo porque fue muy fuerte, pero realmente eh, eh, nosotros los cubanos hemos demostrado la capacidad de recuperación por este nivel de organización y de planificación que tenemos para establecer las prioridades. Una vez que se hace la limpieza y empezamos ya a reponer todos esos recursos, realmente eh, son de fácil recuperación, aunque eh, hayan sido una afectación mayor que en otros polos. Meanwhile, New York City's iconic Empire State Building went dark on Tuesday to pay tribute to those affected by Hurricane Irma. Bureau Report, Roger Sabha TV. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. Cambodia's main opposition party was blocked from holding a memorial ceremony for the victims of a 1997 grenade attack, with tension running high after the arrest of its leader. Kem Soka, president of Cambodia National Rescue Party, was accused of plotting treason against the government with the help of the United States. Thousands of French people protested against, the president, against their president Emmanuel Macron's plan to loosen labor regulations. About 4 lakh people held demonstrations, protests in 180 places against a 36-measure reform intended to ensure equality, freedom and security for employers and employees. Hours after Parliament voted against the referendum, Iraqi Prime Minister Heather al Abadi described the Kurdistan region's measure as unconstitutional. He said that Kurds are continuing to illegally export Kikuk oil and called upon the leadership to come to Baghdad and conclude a dialogue. The Robert E. Lee Elementary School in Tampa, Florida caught fire on Tuesday. The fire at one of the oldest schools in Hillsborough County burned through the roof. No one was injured, but the cause of fire is still unknown. Hundreds of protesters marched through Buenos Aires to protest against the visit of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Argentina. Protesters carried Palestinian flags and signs accusing Netanyahu of genocide as they made their way through downtown Buenos Aires to the Israeli embassy. And finally, all the updates from the world of sports in Sportsbeat. Ace Indian badminton player PV Sindhu, Parupali Kashyap, Samir Varma and the men's doubles pair of S. Ranki Reddy and Chirak Shetty advanced to the second round at the Korea Super Series Badminton Tournament. World silver medalist Sindhu beat Hong Kong's Chun Yan Yi 21-13, 21-8 in the women's singles. In the men's singles, Kashyap defeated Chinese Taipei's Su Jin Zhao 21-13, 21-16. Samir Varma defeated Tanon Sak S. Sak 21-13, 21-23, 21-9 in the men's double. S. Ranki Reddy and Chirak Shetty defeated Li, Ming, Li Xiong Meng and Lin Chian Chu 21-9, 22-24, Pakistan beat the World 11 by 20 runs in the first 2020 international match at Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore. Pakistan scored 198 runs while the World 11 managed to score only 177 runs for seven wickets. Sohail Khan, Roman Raiz and Shadab Khan took two wickets each. Pakistan had brilliant contributions by Shoaib Malik and Babar Azam, who was declared man of the match. Lionel Messi scored twice as Barcelona took a 3-0 victory over Juventus, which kicked off their Champions League campaign. The result gave Barcelona revenge for their defeat to Juventus in last season's quarterfinals and put them on top of the Group D alongside Sporting Lisbon. In the other match, Paris Saint-Germain defeated Celtic in Glasgow. In the 19th minute, Neymar scored his fifth goal in five appearances for PSG. Kylian Mbappe then scored the second goal to make it 2-0. And that's all we have for you in the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us.